Today we're going to write equations of circles given the center and a point on the circle. So at the top of the table in the shaded area it says the equation of a circle with center h, k, and radius r. So we just need to recall the equation of a circle. So it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So what we are missing, if we're just given a center and a point on the circle, is the radius. So remember, uh, the radius is the distance from the center that's the point that's given, as well as the point on the circle. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is find the length of the radius using the distance formula. Now there's three lines there because depending on which type of segment we're looking for, that's going to determine the formula. Okay? So for a slanted segment, the distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Hoping that looks like an exponent of 1. So let's get rid of so y1 squared. Now, for your horizontal and vertical segments, you have to look at which values are the same. So for a horizontal segment, the y values are the same, so we have no change in the y, so we need to look at the difference between your x values. And we take the absolute value of that because distance is never negative. For a vertical segment, that's going to be the absolute value of the difference of your two y values as the x values are the same. And then we substitute the center and radius into the equation of the circle and simplify. So let's look at question one. Write the equation of circle P with center 2, 0 that passes through the point 8, 8. So let's draw a circle. I always suggest to sketch a picture. So here's circle P. The center is at 2, 0, and it goes through the point 8, 8. Okay, so we have the center right here. Now we need the radius. So the radius is equal to the difference of our x values. So 8 minus 2 is 6. So 6 squared plus 8 minus 0 is 8 squared. And I'm okay with you just showing me that line. Okay, so the square root of 6 squared is 36 plus 8 squared is 64. The square root of 100, so our radius is 10. So now putting these two together, our equation, remember, is x minus the x value of the center. So x minus 2 squared plus, now it's going to be y minus 0 squared, as that's our y value, equals 10 squared. So to simplify that, our final answer is going to be x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals 100. I don't want to leave it as y minus 0. Okay. Now there's another way to find r aside from using the distance formula, which I'll show you number 2. So here you have a circle that's graphed. Um, it has center negative 3, 4. And it passes through the origin. So instead of using the distance formula, you can make a right triangle. So here's the segment. So I'm going to go over and down. So this segment right here, the horizontal segment, is going to be 3. And this is going to be 4. So to find the radius, that's just going to be Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals r squared. Now 9 plus 16 is 25. The opposite of squaring is the square root. And we get a radius of both 5 and negative 5 because we have two roots. It's a degree 2 equation. We want to reject the negative as we can't have a negative length. So our radius is 5. The equation is x minus, well, our x value is here. And when I subtract the negative, that's going to turn positive squared plus y minus 
4 squared equals the radius squared, and 5 squared is 25. So it's again, you don't have to use the distance formula. You can just simply use the Pythagorean theorem. In number 3, it says, does the point 4, 4 lie in the circle whose center is at the origin and radius is the square root of 32? So first we have to write the equation of the circle whose center is at the origin, okay? And whose radius is the square root of 32. So in the centers of the origin, we have no x and y value to subtract from x and y before we square it. So it starts x squared plus y squared. And then our radius squared. So that I'm going to do over here. So radius squared would be the square root of 32 squared. And because the square root and squaring are inverse operations, those cancel out and we're left with 32. So we end up with our equation being x squared plus y squared equals 32. So to determine if this point is on the circle, we have to plug in the x and y values. So is 4 squared plus 4 squared equal to 32. Yes, 16 plus 16 equals 32. So does it? You have to say yes or no. So it is yes. In the next section, it says we're going to write the equation of a circle given the endpoints of the diameter. So we're not given the center or radius. So we're missing the center which would be right here. That's our HK. And we're missing the radius. OK, so the first thing we do is find the center using the midpoint formula. OK, since the diameter goes through the center, we're going to use the midpoint formula. So the midpoint is the average of the x's and average of our two y values. Okay. Next, we're going to find the length of the diameter using the distance formula, which we wrote on the previous page. And to find the radius, we divide the diameter by 2. The reason why we don't use the center that we found to just find the length of the radius is because what if you made a mistake here? Then you're going to make another mistake there. So we try to avoid the double error if possible. Okay? And then we substitute. So in number 4, it says write the equation of a circle whose diameter has the endpoints. So I'm going to draw a picture. Again, it doesn't have to draw a circle. I'm just going to put the points here. They don't make sense. So the midpoint, I'm going to add these up. So my center is 18 plus 4, which is 22 over 2. And then negative 13 minus 3 is a negative 16 over 2, so we have a center of 11, negative 8. And now the radius, again, I'm going to find the length of the diameter first and then divide it in half. So that's the square root of, remember we subtract our x values, so 18 minus 4 is 14 squared plus a negative 13 minus a negative 3 turns to a positive, and that's going to be negative 10 squared. So that equals, well, 14 squared is 196 plus 100 is 296, and we need to simplify. So if we go to your calculator, the largest perfect square factor is 4. It's 4 times 74. So square root of 4, we get 2 radical 74. Now, for the radius, we said we're going to have to cut this in half. So the twos cancel out, and that's just the square root of 74. Our equation, our answer, is going to be x minus the x value of the center, which is 11, squared plus 
y minus the negative 8, so that turns to plus equals r squared. Again, if we're squaring a radical, so r is a square root of 74, r squared is going to be square root of 74 squared, which is an inverse operation, so we're left with 74. And the last one. Write the equation of a circle whose diameter has those endpoints. Um, and it says the use of the grid is optional. I say it's not optional. Let's take a look at the actual picture. So the endpoints are 1, 5, and 7, 5. So that will easily allow us to spot the center right here. And that center is going to be 4, 5. It also allows us to see the radius, which is the distance from the center to a point, which is 3. Well, that was really easy. Um, you may have seen it above, but we didn't have to use a formula or um, take the time to do any calculation. We just count the squares. So our answer for the equation is going to be x minus. So the x value is 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals the radius squared, and 3 squared is 9.